Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. 2022 ended with a bang for CYC Motor with the release of the third generation of their X1 and Stealth motor systems. 2023 is starting in much the same vein with another new motor. This one is called the Photon and it's very much in the style of the BBS HD, although much lower in power and much more compact in size. This is the first of two motors of this style and the second of which will pack quite a bit more power and it will be available later in 2023. There are some similarities with the BBS HD and some differences. The key difference is that it contains a torque based pedal assist sensor. Other similarities are the helical gear structure. I don't think it can be an IPM rotor though, just based on the small housing. The motor seems to be aimed pretty squarely at the mountain bike crowd that like to ride it hard downhill and get a bit of a boost getting back to the top. I don't have one of these, so I can't really tell you how it rides personally, but I'm going to have a look at it from a design perspective and a features and a price point perspective. The marketing says it's designed with subtlety to ensure low noise and smooth performance in a compact body. And it is definitely compact. There are no arguments there. It's tiny. I'm not sure which of the three gear options are pictured here, but the motor is seriously small. It would be really easy to miss it on a bike. In fact, it's much more stealth than the motor that they're actually calling the stealth. The low noise is a product of the helical gear structure and the enclosed nature of the design, but mostly it's because it's only 750 watts max. The BBS HD is ultra quiet at only 750 watts. It's much, much louder if you stick 4,000 watts through it. The cranks are ISIS. I'm not sure if you can use any aftermarket parts with it or not. The chain rings are definitely proprietary. It would have been nice to see the aftermarket component makers being thrown a bone. People like to customize and add variety to their builds. There is a throttle of the thumb type, and I noticed in the order page that there's no real choice of throttle, so I'm guessing this is the only option. I don't see many people running on the throttle exclusively that much. I see this more as a PAS bike. Many countries don't allow throttles, so it makes sense that with the 750 watt power limit, this is not really a big feature of the system. The, uh, the review that I've seen in EMTB Tech spoke really well of the response of the torque system, which is really good to hear. It sounds like it's really well configured out of the box, which has been a huge issue in the past with their Gen 2 stuff. I'm assuming that the new electronics are based on the VESC platform, as is the case with their higher power motor systems. The display in the video is the SW102. It's not quite as sophisticated as the Egg Rider, but I'm hopeful that it will allow a road and an off-road riding style. CYC have spent a lot of time working on a new version of their phone-based tuning app, so hopefully this will be a much more seamless experience than with the Gen 2 systems. It looks pretty simple to install on a bike, much more in line with the BBS HD. The photo here shows about four stages to get the motor on with any spaces needed. There are many options for different types of bottom bracket, so people are not limited to the British threaded type. It looks really quite cool on the bike. This channel is about brutal honesty, however. So from a design perspective, there are a couple of things that I have an issue with. The first is the heat sinking. It looks amazing. It looks really cool. With such a tiny motor, I'm assuming that it needs all these fins to not overheat at the higher power ranges. My problem though is twofold. Mountain bikes get covered with crap and debris. And you can check this photo out from the review. It's absolutely covered. And they're saying that they got the temperature up to 60 degrees, which is kind of getting up there. They also ran it at 500 watts over some not particularly steep hills. And I'm hoping that there's really good thermal protection because it's going to be interesting to see if this can handle a really, really steep hill at 750 watts covered in shit like this. Someone's going to find out, that's for sure. The second part is that you then have to clean it. And in general, pressure washers don't really mix with DIY e-bikes. Maybe this one is so well sealed that it's going to be okay. Where I ride though, I just know that little rocks and chips are going to get in those fins and with vibration, they'll get jammed in and is pulling them out going to damage the finish. It looks really, really cool. It also looks a right pain in the ass to maintain. I also have some concerns about how the cables exit from the top front of the motor. CYC could have had these exit anywhere, but they pick the top front, which is not great for two reasons. The first is that water can run right down these cables. I can see that there's a gasket on there and I hope that the control unit is fully potted because if it's not and that seal fails, 
I don't really see what's going to stop moisture getting in. The second issue is that any branches and debris that you encounter during riding in tight trails or rough terrain have a chance to whip right into these cables. And yes, you can, and you should add some protection in there to armour it. And in this photo, they've actually tried to do this. But in my opinion, this could and should have been designed to be at the back and with a natural drip edge for the water. To me, it's just kind of adding in some needless points of failure. And perhaps CYC will address this in the future generation of this motor. We should also look at the cost. I live in Canada, so I'm going to base it on that. I've picked out here the photon motor as well as a 52 volt battery from CYC to go with it. I could have gone elsewhere for a battery, but I wanted to keep things simple. The total cost is $1,651 and that's US dollars. So converted, it's approximately 2,145. With taxes and duties, it's at least 2,400. After the price reduction is gone, it's over 2,500. If I needed a bike to put on it, something decent is around $3,000 plus. So to go from scratch, you're looking at a bike in the region of 6,000 Canadian dollars. You do get a two year warranty for CYC for mechanical issues, but you would also then void any kind of warranty on your bike by installing it. From everything that I've heard so far, the torque sensor is amazing, but it feels very expensive to me for 750 watts of power. It's aimed at the mountain bike crowd, I think, that like to go pedal assist, which is fine. The thing is, for that kind of outlay, you're getting into the area where you could buy a pre-built bike with an integrated battery that has better balance and handling for the same or even less money. A bike that will have a warranty that you don't have to build yourself, that has a motor with a proven pedigree and a torque sensor that will be just as good as the CYC one. I really like CYC and I don't want to seem like I'm being negative. It's a really compact design and it looks nice on the bikes I've seen and hopefully the points that I'm raising will not be that much of an issue to people. Anyway, if you're buying one of these motors or if you're interested in buying one and definitely if you've ridden one, please comment because I'd love to hear from you. As always, huge thanks to the channel members who keep this place running and thanks to everyone for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.